Hi, my name's Jessica and I'm a dietitian, but I'm also a person who lives with diabetes. I've had type 1 diabetes since I was 22 years old, which means that I've had it for quite some time now. And I have had a whole range of experiences with the ups and downs of living with diabetes. Carbohydrate counting is really near and dear to my heart because I do it every single day. Um, sometimes I do it by memory, sometimes I do it by habit, but it's something that we have to do for every single meal that we eat. So being having the opportunity to talk about that today has been really valuable and it also made me go and measure a few things this morning for my diabetes, <laughs> my muesli. Carbohydrates or carbs are part of foods that our body breaks down to glucose to use for energy. Carb foods include starches and sugars. And starchy carbs include breads, cereals, potatoes and rice. And sugars, they include natural sugars like those found in fruit, milk and yogurt, as well as the sugars that are found in sugary drinks, cakes, biscuits, pastries, ice cream and lollies. Carbs are important because they get broken down into glucose, which raises your blood sugar levels. The more carbohydrates that you eat, the more that your blood sugar levels rise. The amount of carbohydrates that your body needs will be different from person to person. And having diabetes means that you have to balance the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating with the insulin that you're taking. Carbohydrate counting means working out the amount of carbs you eat in a meal, snack or drink. And how precisely you need to count carbs will really depend on the type of insulin you take or whether or not you adjust the doses. People who give the same doses of insulin each day will need to keep their carb intake roughly the same at each meal. If this is how your insulin is given, you may only need to roughly estimate your carb count. Those who adjust their insulin doses at each meal, using insulin pens or a pump, will be able to eat different amounts of carbohydrates and given an insulin dose to match this. This does need more precise carb counting. Counting carbs, whether roughly or more precisely, can help to keep blood glucose levels in target, as well as avoiding hypos. The first step in carb counting is identifying the foods that do and do not contain carbs. The next step is to work out the total amount of carbs in your meal or snack. And you can count carbs in grams, 10 gram portions or 15 gram exchanges. All these methods are accurate. And using carbohydrate exchanges is one of the more common ways of counting carbs. When doing this, one carbohydrate exchange equals 15 grams of carbohydrate. And this method is useful for comparing different foods in portion sizes that all contain the same amount of carbohydrate. An example of one carb exchange is one apple, one slice of bread, one cup of milk. Using carb exchanges is a great place to start when carb counting. You can find a simple carb exchange list on the Diabetes Victoria and the NDSS website. If the food is labelled, use the nutrition information panel to find the carb information. If not, try carb counting books, smartphone apps or websites. Advanced or precise carb counting is for people wanting to adjust their insulin dose to match the amount of carbs they are eating. The key steps are, identify foods in your meal or snack that contain carbs. Weigh or measure the amount of food you are going to eat. Use kitchen scales or measuring cups to do this to make it more accurate. Work out the amount of carbohydrate in your serve, and this can be tricky and it can involve some mats. But practice will make it easier and over time, a dietitian can help you learn these skills. Counting carbs is one thing, but you might be asking, how do I know how much carb I should be eating? Well, healthy eating for people with diabetes can take a wide range of eating approaches. Healthy eating should help with your diabetes management, provide all the nutrients that you need, be safe and enjoyable, and suit your culture and your lifestyle. 
So this means that the amount of carbs that is right for one person might be different for another person. Low carb eating is one of the options that is currently popular to help lose weight and to help manage blood glucose levels. People mean different things when they say low carb. For some people, it can mean cutting back on sugary foods, but for others, it could be reducing carb foods in all of their meals. There are very few studies showing the long-term safety and effectiveness of low-carb eating for people with type 1 diabetes. Low-carb eating is not recommended for children, pregnant and breastfeeding women, or people with certain medical conditions or histories. Many people have found the low-carb approach to eating helpful. So if you want to give this way of eating a try, then get the support that you need by speaking with your diabetes healthcare team. If you want to give low-carb a try, here's some key tips. One, start by limiting high-carb foods that are low in nutritional value, like sugary drinks, chocolates, lollies, chips and pastries. Two, make sure that the carbs that you do eat are the healthiest options, like fresh fruit and vegetables, whole grains and dairy foods, such as milk and yogurt. This will help make sure that you're getting enough fibre and enough nutrients to keep your body physically and mentally healthy. Three, include mostly healthy, unsaturated fats and oils found in avocado, olive oil, nuts, and this will help protect you against heart disease. So choose lean meats and fish and try to have a vegetarian meal at least once a week. Four, you may notice some side effects when you start a low carb diet, like headache, fatigue, and constipation. And for most people, these are only temporary. Five, you may need to reduce your insulin medication doses to help reduce the risk of hyperglycemia, which would be considered below four millimoles per litre. Having a good awareness of carb foods is a key part to managing your diabetes. The best way to work out how much carb is right for you and how carb counting can help is to talk to your diabetes team. An accredited practicing dietitian who is experienced in diabetes is a key part of this team. Other places you can learn more about carbs include attending a Carb Smart program, and this is an introduction to carb foods, particularly for people with type 2 diabetes. Working through the NDSS carb counting modules, and these are online modules to get you started with carb counting. If you have type 1 diabetes, you might like to attend the OSDAFNI program. OSDAFNI stands for Dose Adjustment for Normal Eating, and it's a five-day program which covers carbohydrate counting and adjusting insulin doses, as well as how to manage exercise, illness, and hyperglycemia. Managing diabetes is a lifelong journey, so don't feel that you have to do it alone. Update your skills and knowledge about carbs by connecting with other people with diabetes, other diabetes services and supports. They can help you along the way. Remember you are not alone and help is available whenever you need it. I really encourage people to skill themselves up with their carbohydrate counting, to practice, to not be too tough on themselves when it doesn't work but to really give themselves the opportunity to manage their diabetes in the best way that they can. Um, and that's part of one of part of the puzzle of diabetes management is carb counting.